Today we're going to talk about arthropods, phylum arthropoda. Arthropods make up 61% of the world's living things. And that is because insects are everywhere. So let's talk about arthropods. I would jot all these down. If I go too fast, please pause it. Characteristics, invertebrates, they do not have a backbone. They have a jointed appendages. First of all, an appendage is something outside of the main part of the body. So arm, leg, tail, antennas, those are all appendages. We have arms and legs, those are appendages. <coughs> jointed <coughs> means that there is a place where they should bend and there are places where they should not bend. Okay, if we take an octopus, for example, it does not have jointed appendages. It can bend anywhere. But if we think of like um, a, spider, a spider's leg, for instance, can only bend at a certain place. It has a joint. We have joints, like our elbow is a joint. It's supposed to bend there, but it's not supposed to bend halfway up our forearm. So jointed appendages, and then bodies divided into segments. Either two or three segments. So different sections of their bodies. <laughs> I'd write this down also. They have an exoskeleton. Exoskeleton is, is kind of a shell. They don't have bones internally like we do. Like an endoskeleton, they have an exoskeleton. Exo means outside, skeleton. I kind of think of them as like peanut M&Ms. They have the, the hard candy shell on the end. The purpose of this exoskeleton is to cover them, support them, protect them. Okay? You can drop an ant from like 10 feet up and it won't die because it's got an, an exoskeleton. It is also lightweight and it prevents them from drying out. If you're an insect, or a scorpion or a spider, any of those things, you don't have a ton of water, a ton of hydration. So you don't want to lose any because you could easily dehydrate. They're going to do this thing called molting, which is shedding their exoskeleton to grow a new one when they outgrow it. You maybe have seen something like, like a snake skin. Snakes molt, they shed their top layer of skin. Many arthropods are going to do that same thing. Most of the time, um, it's because they outgrow it. So molting is, is shedding your outside layer of skin to grow. Go ahead and write this down. Five classes of arthropods. Five classes of arthropods. We're going to break them down. The first one's arachnids. Write it down, arachnids. And, and I would probably put those... Examples as well. Scorpions, mites, spiders, ticks. These are all examples of arachnids. Arachnids have two body segments. I'd write this down. A cephalothorax and an abdomen. Basically, they have a head chest area. And an abdomen is like you have abs, okay, kind of a belly area. So they have a head chest area and then a belly area. No antennas. <laughs> Spiders, ticks, they don't have antennas. They have four pairs of legs or eight total legs. And they kill their prey using poison glands, fangs, or stingers. Okay, we've probably heard of some poisonous spiders, okay, where they, they kill their prey with those. Um, what happens a lot of times is they paralyze their prey with their stingers and then they can eat it. When it's still alive, it's just paralyzed. <coughs> Things like ticks. We've probably picked a tick off of us before. Um, ticks don't use poison as much as they use like um, anesthesia. So um, if you have a tick crawling on you, okay, if it bites you, you're not going to feel it because what it does is it, it has this anesthesia so you don't feel it. 
If a tick bites you and you feel it, you're gonna know you're gonna peel it off. It doesn't want you to know. So it's going to basically um, deaden your area that it's going to bite and then it bites you. Mites do the same thing. Um, you don't need to run into this. Spiders um, cannot chew their, their food. Um, their, their poison in their fangs are basically going to liquefy their food. So you've probably seen a, a spider like wrap up a fly in its web. What it does is it'll wrap it up, then it'll inject some of that poison into it, and it'll start um, digesting it up. And once it gets good and soupy, then it'll eat it. Ticks and mites, these are parasites. Remember, a parasite is something that feeds off a host. Um, ticks are going to suck your blood. Mites are going to um, usually feed on dead skin. You have mites in your hair, and your eyebrows, on your skin, okay? Um, it's pretty common. Scorpions, um, they have a stinger on their tail. Um, it can be painful most of the time. It's not going to kill humans. There are a couple of really poisonous ones. The second <coughs> class of arthropods is centipedes. So kingdom animalia, phylum arthropoda, class centipede. Centipedes, write this down, have antennas. They live in wet areas and they have one pair of legs for each segment. So we can see here, each segment has one pair of legs, one on each side. They're going to live in damp areas. <laughs> um, if you, like, if there's a branch or something that fell down behind your house and you, like, flip it over, you might see some, some centipedes that were underneath that um, dead piece of branch or whatever it is. Um, they like that damp, wet area. We had a cellar when I was a kid that you'd go down and there were always centipedes um, down there because it was wet and dark and damp. Uh, write this down, they have poison claws and venom and they're meat eaters. They're gonna eat snails, slugs, worms, soft bodied things. <laughs> so centipedes, one pair of legs per segment, and they are meat eaters, carnivores. Millipedes are the third class of arthropods. <laughs> they have an antenna. They also live in, in wet areas. Now the difference is they have two pairs of legs per segment. Instead of one, they have two pairs, and these are herbivores. They're gonna eat plants. Um, you maybe have seen these around before. Um, if you're outside digging around, um, some people call them like roly polies. When they get scared, they roll up in a tight little ball. Let's stop there for today.